can't wait to see what happens. Ricky Carmichael looking to keep the perfection alive. It'll be tough here because the talent level is certainly notched up. And Ricky coming off a less than stellar Supercross word where he got the Supercross title. But we are off and running here at Glen Helen. Kevin Windham looking like he's not missing a beat, sits right behind the Cobra, David Villeman. Moving into a really rutted section. Windham almost goes down right there, makes a mistake, so that's going to give Villeman the clean-cut lead. Both these guys had to ride a qualifier this morning. Windham and Villeman, I think they're a little bit more warmed up and in tune with the track right now. Motocross cross championship. Well, there's no question that David has the speed. He's, he's very at home on that 450, as is Kevin Windham. There, there's riding styles and techniques. You know, not, not the way they look, but the way they attack the track with throttle control and the line choice is very similar. So that bike seems to complement him where I don't think it does for Ricky. So he's just so wide open and pinned everywhere. You can't quite ride a four-stroke bike. Look at Wyndham trying to make a move on the Cobra. This is so much pressure right away. And I know that David is anxious to get out there, but it's... It's a little bit tougher to do when you, you got so much pressure, and he already made a mistake. He went wide, and there goes Kevin. So Kevin Windham, with a little bit of patience and a little bit of rutted track. I think everybody here realizes the potential of Kevin Windham, the ability to ride a motorcycle smoother and faster than anyone on the planet, even Carmichael. And so far, their gamble is paying off. Speaking of speed, here comes Ricky Carmichael to the outside. He gets the pass done and gets past number 15, Timmy Ferry. So Ricky Carmichael now moves into third. Come back to Glen Helen Raceway in San Bernardino, California. These are the GiantRV.com U.S. Nationals. Todd Harris along with the champ David Bailey and Cameron Steele. This is moto number one. Ricky Carmichael looking very good, although Tim Ferry on his back trying to get that third place back in front of Carmichael. Villeman and Kevin Windham, who has been somewhat of a surprise. The guy comes out of, I don't want to say retirement, but near retirement, and just lights the first lap up. Well, we all knew he could do it, but it's just amazing to see him doing it right now. Villeman makes a mistake right there. Can't do the step up, and just like that, Carmichael's up into second. And now I'm wondering, this is where Kevin used to have a weakness. You know, when he's got the guy behind him that's on. Nose just dove on him, David. Well, I didn't even see anything coming there. It looked like he just went up the jump just like any other time, but he must have jumped just offline. Let's take another look. Gets into the berm. Everything looks good here. You can tell by his correction in the air, he's going, uh-oh, going a little too far left. And he runs right into a stack of those tires. Man, that, that was, that was a, he just came to a complete stop right there. Unbelievable. He's able, different looks angle. Like he's able to get up and start to kick the bike, but watch how fast he comes to a stop. Bam. No warning whatsoever. You pointed out he was trying to make some kind of correction in the air. David, let's look at this at full speed. Well, it's been a picture-perfect race up until this point. I don't know how he got so well. He was in the berm. I think he just wasn't setting himself up for the next corner, and it, everybody was cutting it pretty close right there. And now he's dealing with what a lot of riders find is the hard thing to do is get one of those big 450 or four strokes started he does but the front end is twisted really bad and here we go again ricky carmichael your leader it's dave strano pass still a little wobbly sean hamlin grabbing in, in the groin area he landed awfully strange as he came through there with a lot of speed meanwhile your leader ricky carmichael continues to lead Chad Reed, a lot of talk about that. Maybe a healthy Lusk or a Villeman on a 450, but Kevin comes in there and spoils the whole deal. Well, for Ricky Carmichael, the streak remains intact. He picks up yet another moto win here at Glen Helen. We'll be back to talk to our champ after this. Moto 2 is off the line. Kevin Windham once again getting a great start, heading to the front of the pack on the inside. Nick Way, number 27, with a great start. Lusk up in there this time, but Kevin Windham gets a second chance to go out there and check out. We'll see if he can do it again. Carmichael is up there, but he's got a lot of riders to get around before he can attack Kevin. Ezra Lusk on the outside, number 11, trying to make a move, gets it done, gets in front of Kevin Windham, number 14, but Windham showing that the first time around wasn't a fluke. Windham certainly someone to be contested with this year. Yeah, just to correct myself, yeah, he hasn't been in the lead in a long time. Well, he led that one for sure. A little mistake right there, and Kevin is right back by, but going in outdoors, Ezra to get back up to 14. And now look at the lead he's already opened up. Carmichael in tow gets around way, but still, Kevin is beginning to check out just like Moto 1. So it's Kevin Windham, Ezra Lusk, and Ricky Carmichael, 1, 2, and 3. This is Moto number 2. 
TheGiantRV.com U.S. Nationals from Glen Helen Raceway in San Bernardino, California. Ricky Carmichael starting to make his move, trying to get around Ezra Lust. Give Ezra some credit holding Ricky off, and that is a tall order in and of itself. You see some places where they've been watering the track a little bit, and you know that that makes the riding conditions great. The only the only thing it kind of wrecks in the first couple of laps is your vision. You can see that Ricky is pretty covered all along his front side. Hard to see. He's got to use a lot of tear offs, and here he comes. Carmichael on the inside, number four. The Honda gets past number 11, Ezra Lusk. And Ezra, somewhat passive in letting Ricky get by, will slide into third place. So Carmichael, you pointed out, looks like he got a full face of Roost. Now sits in second, and it's deja vu once again. Windeman first, Carmichael. Two bumps, he's able to be a little bit more aggressive coming down into the corner. He doesn't give up anything in the corner, so right. that line's really paying off for him. And Kevin can feel the pressure now. Kevin Windham feeling the pressure of his teammate Ricky Carmichael, both men riding for Honda. Number 14 is Windham, number four is Ricky Carmichael, the defending champion, trying to keep his streak alive, a streak which was basically started after the last time Kevin Windham beat him. Yep, Kevin's the one guy that everyone knows could beat him, and... You know, this is probably the most impressive comeback in motocross that I've ever seen. You know, because he was a question mark when he when he broke his leg last year in Atlanta, and he sat out for a long time, and it was, he kept it a secret what it was he was going to do or not do, and finally to just come back, and our first look at him is he's running with Carmichael. That just doesn't happen outdoors. Last year, no one even got close for 24 motos. Kevin Windham is so incredibly fast. And you put him on that four stroke, you think, well, Ricky Carmichael will get him eventually. But he is doing a masterful job on a track, as Ricky said in his own words, that is just going to get worse. It will get worse, and the glare will get worse. But you know what? Both these guys like really demanding technical tracks. The more ruts and stuff like that to develop, the better it is for Kevin Windham. He just floats through all of it with ease. And Carmichael likes it because everyone gets tired, and he doesn't, you know? And... And when we look at these guys, we, we can kind of call them teammates, but it, on one hand, but on the other hand, it's, you know, Ricky is full factory Honda, factory semi, along with Fonseca and, and Nathan Ramsey. But for Kevin, although it's a full factory bike, he's under the factory connection umbrella, I should say. And even though these guys uh, could be teammates all the time, they have their own buses. They don't see much of each other right. anyway. So there's, it's every man for himself right now. They're both riding red, but there are no team orders right now. Ricky Carmichael trying to keep that streak alive. Kevin Windham trying to break it up. Number 14, Kevin Windham is your leader. Number four, Ricky Carmichael, right behind him. You can see that Kevin's able to cut that corner a lot tighter. Oh, he loses a little mistake right there, and Ricky's put a lot of pressure on him, but he was able to cut that corner a lot tighter because he has more power to get over that step up. So Carmichael looks for a spot to pounce. Kevin Windham tries to hold him off for a few more laps. Ricky really coming on hard, and Kevin Windham searching for an answer to hold the youngster off. Well, you know what I'm thinking as they approach that section, where uh, the line that I talked about Ricky's been using, he's trying to stay close enough to Kevin. He sized him up the last time. If he's close enough, oh, beautiful. Well, he doesn't have to wait till this the next straightaway to make the pass. He was able to jump over the top of that timing section and caught Kevin by surprise. Ricky Carmichael slides to the inside. He gets the job done. He gets past Kevin Windham, so it's one and two. Carmichael leads. Kevin Windham now sits in second. Now I wonder if Kevin's just going, all right, I haven't ridden with Ricky in a while in a race situation. Let me just check him out. I don't know if he's doing a little cat and mouse thing here or if he, he just doesn't quite have enough for Ricky. We'll find out another lap or two if Ricky can check out. He's kind of hidden in the crowd, but he has really stepped it up in the second moto, riding fabulous in some fast company. Speaking of riding fabulous, Ricky Carmichael does exactly what he needs to do to pick up a win and a title. And that is what he's been a story for him the last two or three years. Carmichael, number four on the Honda ride, was in fourth place, moved his way up to third, and finally picked off Kevin Windham on a very tricky section. Using patience, but also using a lot of throttle and power, Ricky Carmichael has just accelerated through the pack. You know what I'm finding about Ricky that, that I'm really impressed with this season is well, he's changed a couple things, first of all. His handlebars are a little bit more forward, and they're up a little bit higher. His seat is a little bit taller, anticipating next year's Supercross season from the people I talked to over at Honda. And he's picking better lines out on the racetrack. Usually, he just pins it, and wherever he ends up is where he ends up, and it's, it's fast, he wins, and that's all that matters. But now, it's, he's able to go fast and really pick some lines. I think in a few places on the racetrack, his lines 
are the only difference between he and the lap, but the surprise of Kevin Windham coming out and really putting on a show. But today it belongs once again to number four, Ricky Carmichael, who comes out, gets the victory in moto number one, and he's going to make it a win in moto number two. Well, so here we go again. The streak is alive, two more motos. And I think what we've seen is that Kevin Windham can run with him. Right. And Chad Reed with some starts can run with him. He was matching his pace, but still, it's going to take a, a great day and a little bit of luck to stop this kid. Well, Ricky Carmichael back on the trail again. As we pointed out at the top of the show, he lost six straight main events to Chad Reed in the Supercross finale. Not something that sets well with Ricky Carmichael, but he is back on his winning ways, winning Moto 1, and now picking up the victory here. Moto number two at Glen Helen.